The new Fortnite update today has a ton of secrets from free rewards, storyline Easter eggs related to the live event, and much more that I guarantee you haven't seen yet. So if you want one of the brand new skins that just came out for free, you're in luck because I'm still gifting five subscribers every single day who drop a like, turn on all notifications, and leave a comment with their epic ID. Huge thank you to these viewers, and special thank you to you guys taking two seconds to type Doom and the Fortnite item shop when you're online I appreciate it a ton so as always we're gonna start with some of the free edit styles that we got in this update so if you own the Zuri skin already then you'll get this awesome style for her for free and they also added a brand new variant for the galaxy skin that we could have won in that last tournament called the galaxy crossfade so if you won that tournament you'll now have this variant and well if you don't have it I think this means it's coming to the item shop very soon We've got another tournament coming up in just a few days though, and it is called the Jujutsu Kaisen Cup. And unfortunately, you can't win the free skin in this tournament, but you can win an emoticon spray and another emoticon for placing top 25%. This is a zero build duos tournament, so you guys are gonna need a friend to play with. And well, if you don't feel like sweating, remember we've got the free half battle pass in the menu where there's a pretty cool emote and a very cool glider that we can unlock for free. So yeah, do not forget about those. Now, moving on to secret number three, we have a new augment in the files that I personally could not find in game. I cycled through quite a few augments, but the new one is called Fire Armory. And when you get this, you'll receive a Dragon's Breath Shotgun and Dragon's Breath Sniper. So that will be pretty cool. And hopefully, if it's not enabled in game right now, it will be enabled soon. And another thing I couldn't find in my game was the new llama that we initially saw at the end of the trailer. So it is finally here at the end of the season. And I'm pretty sure this is supposed to drop the new mythics. So if you do find it, you'll be guaranteed to get them. And you guys definitely need to try these out because they are awesome. The first one is called Hollow Purple. And well, it basically works like Goku's Kamehameha as well as the Death Deku smash but this thing does look absolutely crazy it destroys everything in its path and I'm pretty sure when you're first charging it up if you're walking on the ground you can still move with it which is kind of a nice little touch so yeah definitely pick this thing up if you see it I saw a ton around the map I think they even just spawn on the ground to be honest because that's exactly how I found our next mythic called the straw doll technique which is actually a hammer that shoots out like some magic nails or something and basically to me it kind of seemed like an upgraded version of the kinetic boomerang because it does 70 damage when you hit somebody and it's got pretty much the same range but then it also will blow up and can do an additional 20 damage so it's technically a little bit more powerful however you only have like three shots before you need to recharge and to be honest the recharging doesn't take that long so it's not that big of a deal but I did notice at longer ranges it is pretty hard hard to hit somebody with this thing although my aim does suck so keep that in mind too but i would say overall it is a pretty solid mythic weapon apparently you can find these mythics in vending machines around the map that will cost 250 gold so i didn't see any but you can always try to save up some gold for them too but anyways moving on to secret number six there is a new landmark in the files called lonely labyrinth and well i didn't see a grayed out area on the map so i'm not sure if it's in game right right now but apparently it's connected to Sloan's snapshot quests which you can complete right now so maybe if you guys go through that whole quest line then maybe you'll find this new landmark another small map change though is that there's now a rainbow on the map that I think is for rainbow royale so you guys might spot that on the map too but the main map change you should all be excited about is that the apparatus seems to be complete and we'll talk about this a little bit later because it gets a little bit deeper but for number seven, I wanted to quickly mention some new NPC dialogues. First of all, there is a brand new NPC on the map, and that is Bush Ranger. And well, you can see all his special lines aren't that special, except he does seem to be scared of Relic, which is interesting. But the most interesting new NPC dialogue has to do with the Era NPC, because if you go up to her as Triarch Knox, she'll say, I know you're hiding from Triarch Aurora, but even you can cannot stop the dawn. So this is a pretty big deal, obviously, because now we know a new Triarch. But not only that, it looks like they split up. 
I would assume this means we will be introduced to Triarch Aurora at some point. And well, our best guess is that it is going to be this skin you guys see here, which we already kind of assumed is going to be in the next battle pass anyways. But yeah, I cannot wait to see who Triarch Aurora is. And our last NPC dialogue that is also really interesting is with the Nia NPC, because if you go up to her as Lorenzo, she will say, so you're my client, huh? Well, your guide Rian has been selling your secrets to Dahlia out in Mega City. This is important because Dahlia is a part of the Unseen who is just trying to cause chaos in the island and is also a group we assume is working with the last reality because of the whole storyline from season two. So just based on these small details, we already have a lot to keep up with, but these are just kind of side stories because the main storyline driver of this update and the season overall is of course still Sloan, which we got a pretty cool new loading screen for her in this last update, which I'm assuming is a reward for the snapshot quest. And we also got a ton of voice lines, which I'll go over the highlights with you guys real quickly. The first thing that I thought was noticed is that she's detecting detecting an incoming signal that isn't natural, but it is one that she kind of recognizes. So this once again leads us to believe that the last reality is coming because obviously back in chapter two, she was the one also fighting against them. She also says that the upcoming eclipse is the key. And while eclipses symbolize deeply transformative times that can bring abrupt and sudden change. And it also says that eclipses are like the cosmic helping hand of the universe universe. So I wonder what that will end up being, but Sloan will also have us use the apparatus or the telescope in this update too during her quests. And it turns out the other explorers on the island don't want us to use it, but we do anyway. I don't think we know exactly what the end result will be, but we also got an update on the astral map in the sky that we also assume are different phases of the moon. There is a lot of evidence for this, which I'm going to go through in detail detail in another video, but essentially this ice moon was the same place the devourer originally came from. So there is a good chance we're going to see his return as well. But anyways, we will see the progress of this mini live in-game event at spawn Island, as well as on the map. And they slightly updated the look of it. So it even looks better in the sky now. But like I said, I don't think we know the end result. So I don't know if it's going to end up leaving like a giant rift in the sky or what like what happened with the last rift gate so we'll have to see there's also something else in the files called the glyph stages which are the symbols on the walls of like rumble ruins so i'm thinking this may be tied to optimus prime and maybe he'll be doing something with those but i'm not sure and yet another change is that it looks like the zero point will become active again because the reality wave sound effects were added to the files which are the same ones that we had back in chapter three so yeah yeah, although we're not getting like an official big live event this season, they've still jam packed the story with a lot of stuff. So hopefully we end up getting some sort of like mini live event that kind of leads us into the next season, which of course will be season four and is supposed to be the last season of the chapter. So then of course we know in season four, there will be a big live event that will take us into chapter five. A couple small details about season four though, is that we already know what the season four starter pack is going to be. So I guess that's kind of cool. I would say the skin's okay. I'm not super excited about it, but I think this may be technically our first season four confirmed skin. And also in season four, we might be seeing the return of the punch card system, which I don't think we've seen since like chapter two. So I wonder why they're bringing that back. A completely unrelated collab also got leaked kind of earlier, but Fortnite just posted an official teaser for the Fortnite and WWE collab. And while you can see, we already know what both skins are going to be thanks to this leaker who's been leaking like everything lately. But yeah, guys, here are the rest of the leaked skins in the files. Drop a like if you learned something new and then definitely check out this video if you missed it.